Welcome to Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in Mark chapter 14. We're going to be starting, well, actually verse 54 and 66 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, thy words were found and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, verses 66 through 72 are talking about Peter's denial. Peter's denial. Now, last lesson, if you notice, I left out a verse, which is verse 54 uh, from last lesson's context. And we're going to be going over this uh, now here in a minute. But as we begin this portion of scripture with of Peter's denial, there's a few important points that we can learn from from uh, Peter's denial. The first point is this, no matter where we go, the temptation to sin and to disobey is always there. It was even in the Garden of Eden. Number two, the end result of temptation is to reveal what lies hidden in our hearts. Peter did not know the cowardice and the fear that dwelt in his heart until temptation came. Temptations test the purity of our hearts and the strength of our convictions. Number three, the amount of years that one follows the Lord is no guarantee not to fall into sin. Number four, the quality of Bible teaching is no guarantee either. Look, Peter had Jesus teaching him for three years, three, three and a half years, right? And he still, he still, uh, um, denied the Lord. He still made bad decisions, right? Number five, people who make great confessions to be loyal to Jesus and to the church cannot be relied upon. We are weak human flesh with great desires but we do not have the strength to see those desires through. You know, a lot of times in our life, in our walk with God, we have great, you know, desires in our heart to do great things for the Lord. But, but, but we have, we don't have the strength to see those, those desires through. No true and honest Christian ever wants to bend under the pressure of temptations, but sometimes they do. And it is comforting to know that the Lord always knew that they would fall and, and that he desires to restore them. So listen, just because temptations come and there's times when we do make a bad decision like Peter and, and, and fall away. Yet the Lord is there to restore. That's the comforting thing we know that the Lord is there to restore us. Now, verse 54 of Mark 14 says, And Peter followed him afar off, even into the palace of the high priest, and he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. Now, according to John chapter 18, verses 15 and 16, we see that there was another disciple and possibly it was John himself that was able to get Peter into the courtyard. So Peter here now is in the courtyard. And he got there somehow. Remember, he, he with the other disciples forsook the Lord in Gethsemane. And now Jesus is in the 
high priest's office, and well, not high priest, but he's there at Caiaphas's uh, house, and Peter follows him there. But he's able to get into the courtyard somehow, and it has to be through possibly John. Now it says here in verse 54 that Peter followed him afar off even into the palace, even into the palace of the high priest. Now, this Greek word for palace, it refers to the place that is around the house where the stables were. The court, it means the courtyard of the house. So Peter wasn't in the actual palace where Jesus was being tried, but he was out in the courtyard. Now, it says here, the last part of verse 54, it says, and he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. Now, the Greek word for fire here in the Gospel of Mark is very interesting because it's, it, it's phos, all right? And this Greek word is never used to describe fire itself, but it is used to describe the light of the fire. This is why this Greek word is used here, because it was the light of the fire that caused the girl at the door to question Peter's relation to Jesus, right? It was, it was the light of the fire. Now, let's, let's go to uh, verse 66, and it says here, And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there comes one of the maids of the high priest. Now, it says one of the maids came uh, to Peter, now, God, <laughs> God actually used two maids. We see, that we see the first maid in verse 66. We see the other maid in verse 69, all right? But God uses two maids to humble Peter from his proud and self-confident heart. Verse 67, and when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, and you was also with Jesus of Nazareth, right? Now, it says here that she looked upon him. Now, this Greek word is, is emblepo, emblepo. It's one word, and it means to look closely or to fix your gaze upon. This was probably the same girl that let Peter and John into the courtyard. When she saw Peter come in, she thought she knew him. So she goes over closer to Peter to get a better look at him from the light of the fire. Now, verse 68 says, But he denied, saying, I know not, neither do I understand what you're saying. And he went out into the porch, and the cock crew. Now, what Peter said was, I neither know what you are saying, neither do I understand what you're saying. And it says that he went out into the porch. Now, Peter probably moved away from the light and into a darker area. <laughs> Wouldn't that be just like Peter, just like any of us, really, right? Peter comes into the courtyard probably with, with, with John. He's let in and uh, inside the building is where Jesus is. And that's where he's being tried. Peter's out in the courtyard and there's a fire, right? And he kind of draws close to the fire to get warm. But then there's this maid. <laughs> then there's a maid. 
that comes and she, by, because of the light of the fire, she looks at Peter and she's looking, right? She's, she's eyeing him up. She, and she, hey, you, you're one of his disciples too. I know you. You're one of his disciples. Peter, I, I don't know what you're saying or what you're talking about, right? So then Peter leaves and he goes into the, into the, uh, into the outer part of the porch, right? Probably he's trying to get away from the light where nobody will recognize him. And then it says, and the cock crew, right? Now this, this phrase is not actually in the Greek text. So somebody must have added this to uh, Mark's gospel here. Verse 69. And a maid saw him again and began to say to him, that stood by, say to them that stood by, this is one of, this is one of them, right? So now, according to Matthew chapter 26 and verse 71, this was completely a different maid, right? This is two different maids here. And it says, it began to, uh, I'm sorry, verse uh, 69 says, they saw him and began to say to them that stood by, this is one of them. Now, the first maid keeps her suspicions to herself. But the second maid here, she includes other people in her suspicions of who Peter is. Which would upset Peter because now there are more people who might recognize Peter as one of Jesus' disciples. Verse 70, And he denied it again. And a little after, they that stood, and, sorry, and a little after, they that stood by said again to Peter, Surely you are one of them, because you are a Galilean, and your speech agrees there too. Now, now the bystanders charge Peter with being a disciple. And it says, and a little after, a little bit after, in Luke chapter 22, verse 59, it means about an hour later. That's how, that's how Luke says it. It's about an hour later when this takes place. The denial that is mentioned here in verse 70 is Peter's third denial. All right? So the denial that is mentioned here in Mark chapter 14 and verse 69 is actually Peter's final denial, his third one. And it says here in the last part of verse 70, and it says, uh, for you are a Galilean and your speech agrees there too. All right. If Peter, <laughs> if Peter had kept quiet, he would have been okay. But now even, even his speech gives him away, right? John's gospel adds another situation that Peter was faced with. In John chapter 18 and verses 25 to 27, because this man was related to Mal, because this man was related to Malchus, he may have seen Peter previously, or at least he thinks that he saw Peter in Gethsemane. Let's read that. John 18, verses 25 to 27. I didn't have it marked out, so I have to find it. John 18, 25 to 27. It says, And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They they said, therefore, unto him, Art not you also one of his disciples? And he denied it and said, I am not. Now, one of the servants of the high priest 
being his kinsman, whose, <laughs> whose ear Peter cut off, says, did not I see you in the garden with him, right? And Peter then denied again. And immediately the cock crew, right? I mean, Peter is, <laughs> I'm sure in a sense, God is probably in heaven having a good laugh getting at Peter, right? Peter tells Jesus, I'll never deny you. I'll even go to death with you, right? <laughs> God is, I'm sure, having a little fun with Peter, showing him the deception of his own heart, showing him the, the weakness of his own flesh. And it's the same with all of us. Listen, we would have all stood up with Peter and, and agreed with Peter that, that we would never deny Jesus. But our flesh is weak and God is using, I mean, God is going to the nth degree and uh, uh, showing Peter that, that you know, your flesh is weak. You, you can't, you have good intentions, but you can't bring those intentions to pass because your flesh is, is going to uh, uh, betray you. So, here in verse 71 now of uh, Mark 14, it says, but he began to curse and to swear saying, I know not this man of whom you speak. Now this Greek word for curse is ana, anathematizo. And it means to call down a curse upon oneself. Peter, Peter was putting himself under a divine curse if he was not telling the truth. Now, Paul, the Apostle Paul, uses this same Greek word in Galatians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Let's read Galatians 1, 8 and 9. And it says here, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached, and let him be what? Let him be accursed. Same Greek word, verse 9. And as we said before, so I now say again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that he, that he has received, let him be accursed. Same Greek word. So, Paul, Paul wanted a curse from God against anyone who preached a different gospel. So this is a serious thing that, that Peter is saying. He's using a, a very serious Greek word here. Now, verse 71 says, And he began to curse and to swear. Now, to swear here means to take an oath. The same Greek word is used in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 11, where God makes an oath that they will not enter into his rest. Peter called down a curse upon himself if he wasn't telling the truth. And he also put himself under an oath when making his denial, right? And he says here, uh, I know not this man of whom you speak. I don't know him of whom you speak. And this Greek word, I know, means is oida. And it means it's, it's in the perfect tense. Why is that important? Because it means to have full knowledge. The perfect tense of oida means to have full and complete knowledge of something or someone. So Peter was, lit listen, you have to understand the seriousness of Peter's denial here. The seriousness of Peter's denial is that he was cutting all ties with Jesus. You have to understand that. Jesus was, I'm sorry, Peter was literally cutting all ties 
with Jesus. Jesus, I'm sorry, just a few hours before Peter said that, before, before Peter said that, even if he would die with Jesus, that he would de not deny him, right? Now, Peter is professing that he has literally no knowledge of Jesus. Has it really gone this far? Are all people in their own strength this week? Is it inevitable that we also will deny the Lord? The answer is yes. In our, listen, in our own strength, we will always fail. It is only God who can keep us. You have to understand that. It's only God who can keep you faithful to God, to, to, to the Lord. Humility is the key. If there is any pride or self-confidence in our heart, like with Peter, God will put us in situations where our own strength will fail. But if we stay humble and know the weakness of our own flesh, we receive strength from God. Strength where? From God. Not strength from our own flesh. Not strength from our own determination to follow. I'll follow you, Lord. I'll stay with you. I won't deny you, right? No, 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 no. We, we start talking like that. I'll stay true to this church. I'll never leave this church. I love the pastor and everything, right? Uh, if you trust in your own flesh, you're going to be gone. You're going to be gone. We have to, our strength comes from the Lord. In verse 72, and the second time the cock crew and Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him, before the cock crow twice, you shall deny me three times. And when he thought thereon, he wept. It says, Peter called to mind. When, when the cock crew, he called it to mind. Like a piercing arrow. All that Jesus said that Peter would do came flying back to his mind. The darkness in Peter's heart heard Jesus' words of his denial, but comprehended it not. The cock crowing was like a light switch that illuminated all the Lord's warnings at Pete, in Peter's heart. And then it says, when he thought thereon, he wept. The Greek word for when he thought thereon is epibalon. And the, the prefix epi means upon. And balo means to throw. Peter immediately threw his thoughts upon all that Jesus said about him denying him. As soon as that, listen, as soon as that cock crew, his thoughts went straight, went straight to the time when Jesus said, before the cock crow three times, you'll deny me. I mean, it, it was like lightning. His, he thought of it immediately. Peter was exposed, but he was exposed to himself. He now saw what the Lord had already seen. He saw what God had seen in his heart, in his wicked, his wicked heart. But with this knowledge is a measure of great relief. I'm, so, I'm sorry, a great measure of great grief and comfort. Grief because of denying the 
the, the Messiah of Israel, your Savior, the one whom you spent the last three years of your life with, the one who showed compassion and forgiveness to those who were in need. But it also brings comfort because Peter realizes that Jesus knew this all along and didn't condemn him or seek revenge. In the back of Peter's mind, he must know that with God, there is forgiveness with thee. Right? Psalm 32, 1 and 2. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, right? And, and Peter realizes that, yes, he has tremendous grief knowing that he denied the Lord. But he also has, there's a measure of comfort knowing that if Jesus knew that he would deny the Lord, yet Jesus didn't condemn him or seek revenge on his life because he's going to deny him. That must have brought a measure of comfort to Peter when he needed it the most. Peter wept bitterly. This is the result when we see our own weakness, when we hurt one that we love. He wept bitterly because he saw himself for who he was. And he saw that his weakness, he denied one whom he loved because of his own weakness. And he goes and he wept, weeps bitterly. We're gonna continue now uh, in chapter 15, next lesson. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.